Welcome to 137 PM's Live from the Bar Cart. This is 137 PM's Live from the Bar Cart. I'm senior producer Matt Bogart, and I'm sitting with Brian Stewart, who is a national brand ambassador for Belvedere. So you've been working in, let's say, restaurants and bars for the better half of 10 years? Uh, I started uh, working in restaurants, yeah, like 15 years ago. How'd you get into it? Uh, I needed to pay for college. That... Um, yeah, no, I mean, uh, I'm, yeah, I was living in Los Angeles. I was going to Long Beach State, and uh, I needed a way to pay for school. And uh, I got a job at a chain steakhouse, and I uh, started working a curbside takeaway where people would call in, tell me their order, and I'd put it into the uh, bag, and they'd pull up, and I'd hand it to them, yeah. which led into uh, bussing tables, then serving tables. And then someone said to me, hey, I think you'd be pretty good behind the bar. So uh, I started a bar back a little bit, and then uh, I got to get into this glorious world that was bartending, and man, I, I instantly loved it, not even knowing you know, the kind of more craft element to it, but just the idea of like engaging with people and getting to talk to them on just whatever their day was like, and to know that I might be able to improve their day slightly just by having a good attitude and feeding them a cocktail. Man, it was the best. I loved it. Now, I'm considered a day walker. Okay. That's, that's what, like, have you heard that term before? Apparently, it's like a real, uh, like a New York City bar term is day walker uh, I, for I, people who don't work in the industry. Man, you know, I've never heard that before, but I spent the better half of my career in Los Angeles. Yeah. So, I don't mean... Um, yeah, I don't. Th- I've never heard daywalker. That's good though. I like. That. It's like because <laughs> you're you're uh, yeah because we're up at night all the time and we don't see the day. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. How do you now find a balance it. between or when you did it like between social life and working a bar till when's last call four a.m. Uh, in L.A. it's two. Um, and uh, when I was working in restaurants, it was a lot easier because I kind of just would go to eleven. But when I started working bars, particularly nightclubs, you really had to kind of focus on one getting sleep. Because you're just so amped uh, after a shift and just dealing with people, and you know you want to kind of self-medicate, which is never good. But you know having an extra cocktail or two before you go to bed, and then that leads into sleeping in longer. So you kind of one working out, like you have to find some kind of physical activity and that makes you one get up and get around. When I was in LA, I used to surf all the time. One because the cold water and the ocean would kind of wash away all the pains of the night before, <laughs> and it, it was a great it was a great workout as well. So uh, it really kind of helped me, and I, I developed a love for being in the water set really got me out of bed yeah. and like not going, oh, I'm just going to, you know, sleep until, you know, it's time to get up to take a shower for my shift. So definitely kind of finding some kind of physical activity that gets you out of your room, out of your living room and outside. And uh, I guess mixing amongst the uh, day walkers yeah. uh, is, is a great way to kind of find that balance. Yeah. Building a routine for pretty much we, at one three seven PM, we like to look at everything through the lens of entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like building a routine, especially, you know, in the bar business is something that is a huge benefit. Totally. And it keeps you honest to what you're doing, where you're putting your time and your hours. Yeah, absolutely. Now, going back to self-medicating and cocktails. (laughs) Always drink responsibly. (laughs) Always drink responsibly. can you talk to me about like the secrets between for crafting one of those cocktails? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, definitely. Uh, Which I'm going to enjoy right oh, now. Oh, please, yeah, we have two delicious Belvedere single estate cocktails right behind you. Um, yeah, for crafting a, a, a great cocktail, the first thing you always need to think about is balance. Yeah, it's just like anything in life. You want to make sure that things are balanced. That way, they kind of work each other out. So, uh, you know, if you start with a spirit, and let's say, you know, oh, I really like, you know, when my drinks are heavy, and you put two much vodka in the glass and you don't have enough of the other mixers, all you're going to taste is the vodka. Your balance is lost. So finding that balance and starting off from making great cocktails is to really kind of learn it before you get into the nuances of everything is find equal parts. So start with one and a half ounces of your spirit and then let's say three quarters of lime, three quarters of simple syrup, shake that up, strain it into a glass. You have a deliciously balanced cocktail, which starts your palate to kind of figure out what things are. It's just like cooking. If you taste sugar in a kind of like a syrup, simple syrup as we call it, versus honey syrup, honey syrup's going to be a little bit sweeter than your simple syrups. You have to use less of it. Yeah. Those are the nuances of finding great crafted cocktails. And then always ingredients. Key ingredients are top notch. I, you know, we we have a saying that, you know, it's death before sour mix. Like sour mix is this, you know, that the pre-bought just chemical induced sour mix is no good. Stay away from that stuff. You wouldn't eat it. You know, you wouldn't eat that <laughs> fake stuff that goes into your food. So why would you do it with your cocktails? The cocktails should be the exact same way. Find uh, premium ingredients, premium fruits, and I got to tell you now that I live it's on like the a East holistic Coast, approach to like creating a 
a beverage pretty yeah, much. Yeah, totally. Or, 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 or a fine meal, you know? Yeah. It's like just like, you know, a Michelin star chef would not use sour mix. You know, you shouldn't use it in your cocktail either. When you create a cocktail or a drink, what is going through your head? Like, what are you thinking about when you're doing it? Oh, man. Um, whenever I create a cocktail, uh, my first thought is, what am I going to make where people are going to want to drink more than one? Um, because responsibly. Responsibly. Well, I mean, you know, most people when they go out to a bar, they're going to have one, uh, two, maybe three cocktails. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, I think a lot of times when, you know, for instance, when I was making cocktails for competitions, I would think of these off the wall ingredients that made it really spectacular and special and judges would go, oh, my God, this is incredible. But you would never drink more than one. So my first thought is, OK, in making this cocktail, have I made the ingredients, um, you know, easy to get? Uh, not overwhelming, and would I have more than one of these? That's my first thought. So in that thought, I always kind of start with simple citrus being lime or uh, lemon, and I don't go too far from those. I mean, there's always kind of instances in that case. but uh, And then from there, my idea is, oh, what kind of emotion is this evoking? Like, am I, oh, is this a sort of laid back kind of relaxed emotion, or is this kind of like I'm up and airy and I'm around and talking to people and it looks good in my hand kind of emotion? So those are the, those are the things that I play into. And the other thing that I always start when creating a cocktail is I, I keep my thoughts based in the classics. Like I don't far too far from the classics. And most of the things that I've studied over the times that I've gotten into the bar has to do a lot with classic cocktails and I innovate from there. You know, bartenders today, they're doing a lot of cool stuff and there's a lot of amazing thing happening in bars that is molecular and scientific and outstanding. But the reality is, is that we're not inventing the wheel, we're revisiting it. Like a lot of the stuff was going down in the early 1900s, late 1800s, and we're getting back into it. But because of the technology that's around, People have never had cocktails this good in that sense that the science is there, our, our knowledge of flavors is there, and so it's really an exciting time for So cocktails. when you say you're revisiting the wheel, it's just because we have different, I guess, technology as opposed to reinventing classics? Yeah, well, or yeah, making exactly. Classics so, better? Well, totally. So, like, let's say that, you know, I put together a cocktail that has uh, lime and um, simple syrup and uh, outstanding, I don't know, um, strawberry that can only be found in the West Indies because of its amazing flavors. And I add a little bit of sherry to it. Uh, and I'm, uh, you know, mixing that with rum and I shake it and I serve it up. Well, that's kind of a variation on the daiquiri. You know, there's different ingredients that you've added to it, but it's a variation of a daiquiri or a sour cocktail in a lot of ways. Or stirred cocktails that go over the rocks. That is a variation of an old-fashioned. So there are variations of things that have been around. It's becoming very hard to create a new style of cocktail because they kind of have the five major groups that are sitting there. And we're, you know... Uh, innovating from that. Now, not to say that you know making new cocktails is impossible. I mean, there's new cocktails being made every day, but they are slightly variations of stuff that has come before. Whenever I talk to people about inventing cocktails or coming up with cocktails, it's just get to know your classics first. Get to know what was working before yeah. you want to shove 17 ingredients into a cocktail <laughs> that you might not taste all of them. Uh, and now that you said you're you're part of the you're on the brand side now, what does a brand ambassador do? Like, what what is the function in the greater scheme of liquor? That's a great question because I think there's really a lot of different types of brand ambassadors. Um, it was a big thing for me when I decided not to bartend anymore that I didn't want to get into a position where I was just selling a product. Because I, I, you know, the idea of sales is fine, but it's not me as a brand ambassador. And I would be the first one to tell you that there's sales to any part of your job. You're selling something, particularly when you're representing it. Um, but my focus and my passion is in education and cocktail development. And when I came to uh, Belvedere Vodka, they were very, they were also aligned with this thinking and we got along great. So that gets into the conversation of what does a brand ambassador do? I'm in, I go around the country, I talk to bartenders about one, are the education of Belvedere, who we are as a brand, our history, what goes into us. And then I also, my other job is to connect with bartenders because, you know, if you're working for a spirit company, uh, you know, the first people who kind of handle your drinks and give it to the public are bartenders. And we have to make sure that we have a clear kind of conversation with them. And I think that's the biggest part of a brand ambassador, just making sure that the brand is not losing touch with the people who are behind the bar. 
or the stick as we like to call it, and uh, <laughs> making sure that you know there's this clear connect because you know you, there was I think there was this time just particularly when I was kind of deciding to come out of the bar where brands were just throwing anything and everything at you in the sense of like oh you're the greatest and check out this new product well what goes into it I don't really know how do you not know like I mean, those 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 dates are long gone I think the brand ambassadors are out now and the people who have been doing it for a long time never were in that spot of like oh I don't know their knowledge is key and um, representing a brand uh, you have to really make sure that you're still really well connected with the bartenders now there's the other side of that where a brand ambassador has all the knowledge they've never bartended a day in their life but they're really good at telling the story of their spirit and they, you know as long as it's an honest true story and you're passionate about it you'll be a phenomenal brand ambassador what made you transition from uh you were a bar manager at uh uh, I was I was uh, managing the, the WeHo Soho House in West so, yeah. in West Hollywood. Um, Soho WeHo. I'm like I got really tongue tied with that. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soho, yeah, Soho House, West Hollywood, <laughs> um, which is a fun. Uh, I mean, listen, I, I owe a lot to the Soho House. I mean, meeting my mentor Chris Ojeda. Um, they really set me up to kind of get into this. But the transition really came from me, one, I would never, I was always that bartender saying, I'm never going to work for a brand. I'm going to just stay behind this bar forever, maybe open up my own bar, and psh, that's it. And I had a couple offers come across the table to work for other brands, great brands. But it's just that I couldn't get behind them fully. And then all of a sudden, I heard that uh, Moet Hennessy was putting together a mixology team. And these the focus was to re-engage the trade with outstanding bartenders talking to their community and I was kind of like okay this is not that idea that I have in my head of just doing sales like I get to still be creative which is yeah. huge to me one I've always always loved everything about Moat Hennessy and their products and their idea of what behind goes behind them and then uh, so I worked with them for two years on uh, more of a brand side and working with the portfolio of everything they have in there and then the opportunity to become the national ambassador for Belvedere came up and Belvedere has always been a secret love of mine meaning that when you're a bartender particularly uh you know 2010 2011 it wasn't cool to like vodka you had to like hide how much you liked vodka so went out with my friends i was like oh this ride these burbs are incredible and then i'd go home and stir myself a vodka martini in private uh also was the only vodka my wife uh, ever drank since i met her even before i started working for the company so we've always had belvedere in the house and um it was just even more of an easy transition for me to kind of get behind this brand and to tell their story. Cool. Brian, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> You're a good liar. <laughs> Never. This is 1.37 p.m. If you want to own the future, start this minute. Live from the Bar Cart is a Gallery Media production.